Sean Perry with VintageRock.com. I'm here at the Coach House here in San, Ho- uh, San Juan Capistrano, actually. Just got finished watching Black Star Riders, featuring members of Thin Lizzy. And I'm here with the opening band, White Lie. We got Dan Marks, um, Kevin Ray, and Michael O'Mara. How you doing, Michael? Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> now, Michael sang with the band tonight. Kevin plays guitar, and he's the founding member here. And Dan plays drums. We don't have Billy the Fist who played dr- uh, bass tonight, but that's okay. Anyway, so this is the first time you guys have played live, right? Actually, this is a this is a unique arrangement. Um, Michael, he's a, he has a bunch of his own bands. He does a, a, a Cheer to Crew, uh, Pyromania, Tributes, or tri- tri- Tributes, or Covers. He's a I keep telling him he's a young Robert Plant. He's like back in the day in the 70s when Robert Plant looked like the shit. I like that young. That, that, that's what this guy reminds me of. But he can sing anything. So he just he only signed up for this uh, probably, what, three days ago? Well, I didn't want to do it until you said young <laughs> Robert Plant. So like, <laughs> well, now you got me with the young. But three days ago he signed up for it because we actually had David McDonald, who's a, a pro singer, a really good guy, and he happened to be going on vacation today. Uh, leaving this morning. I said, you cannot postpone one day. <laughs> but so he's filling in for uh, Dave McDonald, uh, who's actually on the hook to do some, some more stuff. But then in the meantime, um, um, brought in Dan Mark here on drums, who mm-hmm. I uh, met at your birthday, actually. Right. That's and right. I was impressed with his personality, his uh, way he plays drums and everything. It was like, you know, and w- the way White Light works is everybody's in like eight different bands these days, right? Tributes, originals, uh, sometimes they go on tour, that you got to kind of be able to work with your lineup. You get, it's got to be open door, people come and go, it's not the old days where you're in you're out. So people come and go and do all stuff, so I've got to have multiple drummers, multiple bass players and whatnot. I try not to have too many singers, you got to have some kind of trademark on your sound. Um, but, um, so Billy the Fist comes from London, um, he comes from Avenging Grace, I think both were in Attica 7, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Attica 7. Yeah. Um, so this was our first show together as this unit, and uh, um, you know, I was just really proud to have these guys on here, I mean, these guys are amazing players, all of them. Beautiful. Sounds like uh, Skid Rose just hit the stage. Yeah, we'll, right we'll, we'll work through it. Now, I mean, you, you founded this band in 1982. Actually, it was founded in 81, and it was called Tricks. Okay. And Tricks, uh, for those who go back that far, uh, Tricks was uh, uh, pretty heavy duty. Uh, you know, we were selling out the strip, we were selling out OC clubs. Pretty heavy duty. We were playing with Smile, Snow, a la carte, Max Havoc, all the kind of what I call the pre 80s bands that set it up for the mid 80s. Where you had like like a Dokken and Poison and, and Rat and all that stuff and Warrant, but those pre those pre strip bands were the ones really said that got the record companies paying attention to what was happening in Hollywood and OC. That's when I was in Tricks and we were kicking ass, taking names. Around '83 we changed the name to White Lie, right. uh, and then we did a record in '83. And then uh, and shortly after we did the record, I got signed like everywhere. I got signed to Black Sheep on a Nigma Records to do a record with them. I got signed to Green World Records to do a record with uh, uh, Martial Law. 
Right. I got signed to Michael Bolton in early 85 to go tour with him and replace Bruce Kulick, right. who went to KISS. Right. And so I just, I never got to get back to White Lie after all these tours and all these bands I got signed to. So recently, since 2009, I reformed the original band. Fast forward 30 years. Fast forward 30 <laughs> years and a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, a lot of hey, alcohol. Hey, hey, you guys have been open in a lot of shows here at the Coach House. I yeah, saw yeah, you yeah. open for UFO yeah, yeah, yeah. and Y&T and yeah, yeah. Fact, you're, you're kind of the, the go-to band here at the Coach House and open for these bands. It goes back to old school rep. All the, the local promoters, clubs, they know me from 30 years ago. They know I always bring a good band. I always draw. I always, you know, handle my business. So I can pretty much get on any show in town. In fact, I hear from the national agencies before they book with the club. I already know who's coming, and I can usually get with the national agency and get on that bill before the club has it. So that's kind of how I get these. But, yeah, the last two years, three years, it's been with UFO, Michael Schenker, Quiet Riot, um, Y&T, Hurricane, uh, Alcatraz. Uh, and then tonight, Black Star Writers, there's basically Thin Lizzy minus one guy, Skid Row. So that's how I get these gigs. It's an old school reputation. Cool, cool. Is it okay if your wife comes in? Yeah, oh. be quiet. Okay. Right. Well, the wife's coming in right now, but that's okay. Let's talk to Daniel. Daniel, Ava- Avenging Grace. Tell Avenging me about Grace. Avenging Grace. Excuse me. Tell me about the band. What, what are you guys up to? Mm-hmm. Well, right now we're just doing shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to be doing some recording pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to be writing some new material. Uh, I joined the band uh, probably uh, almost a year ago, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, it's going really well, really well. We got some really strong material, really great musicians. Uh, you know, we're just we're just hitting the streets, man. Yeah, well, absolutely, Michael. What, what, tell, tell me about what you're up to. I know you, you were telling me earlier you played with Pyromania yeah. and um, uh, a, a Motley Crue tribute band. Tell me a little more about that. Okay. Well, um, when I'm not when I'm not when I'm not doing original stuff, because I'm a professional, I know how to handle it. An F, it looks like an SM57. Um, when I'm not doing original stuff, I do tributes, I do covers, studio work, basically anything to keep busy. I like to keep busy. I love my wife, I love my daughter, but I love to go out and play. So. Yeah. Rock and roll! Rock and roll! Didn't you just come back from Texas on the Texas? Run? Yeah, that was a. I, I do a Motley Crue tribute band, Def Leppard, Zeppelin, the cover bands. So you're a band slut. I think so. I think I. Yeah. Thinking about doing a Def Leppard thing with this awesome drummer that I know, and. Either dissing you or something. Yeah. I mean, why not? I I love the. Although everybody's like, oh my god, you've got an '80s voice. I love the '70s. Love the '70s. So Deep Purple, Zeppelin, Ozzy. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. What? Oh, what? Huh. <laughs> he I was going to say, though, um, you, you, you hit a really high note tonight that reminded me very much of, of a young Ian Gillen. A young? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, baby. Well, no, because Ian Gillen can't even I hit those notes anymore. Uh, no, I had some earlier. It was quite I tasty. Earlier, to me, the vibe that I pick up from him, every time I see him, it's like a young Robert Plant. Oh, early Zeppelin. When he had the, 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 low, hip, the low hip jeans and he was still, when he was on the shit, that's what Michael reminds me of. Yeah. His yeah. voice is better, but... Yeah. I'm not <laughs> better than yes. You are quite the showman, yes. definitely. So what's next? You guys gonna do some more work actually, together? Or? A whole bunch of stuff in the works. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's a bunch of more shows like this one where we're playing national acts. We've got a, 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 an autism benefit concert we're doing in July, um, and that actually a lot of people who don't know White Lie actually do every year. I do autism benefits, cancer benefits, uh, different kinds of things for you know those causes because I have people I know or friends or family that have both suffered from those diseases. So I always make sure every year to do autism, cancer. We just did Metal Jam. This is Autism Benefit in, in April. Uh, before that, we did uh, the Cancer Benefit in January. Um, we were, and it's going to be another Autism Benefit in July. So I, I'm going to be doing that in July. And in September, o- October, I got some really cool gigs. I can't actually talk about them yet because I'm yeah. still in the works. But they're like this. They'll be UFO type, Michael Shanker, you know, Quiet Riot, um, uh, uh, YNT, um, Skid Row, Blackstar Riders, that kind of show. Excellent. 
Excellent. Well, and I do want to mention the fact that you were one of the organizers, and Dan played at the Vintage Rock Party that we had in April. It was my birthday party. Billy the Fist was also a co-organizer of that show. Yep. Yeah. I apologize for that, but uh, you would have been more than welcome. And I guess that sort of was the start of, of this union then. What, what, what kindled this whole thing is because Billy the Fist was not here, unfortunately. He plays with London. But one of the thing was, Billy and I worked together for your birthday party to get the jam going. We had people like uh, Chuck Wright. We had Nadir the Priest. We had Michael Oliveri from Leatherwolf. We had some really uh, top-name guys coming in through our relationships. And so Billy and I partnered on it. So when I was hanging with Billy, I got a really good vibe on him. He's a great bass player. He's a phenomenal bass player. So anytime I'm with another musician, he's like, really good. And we're like, I'm like we should play. <laughs> so we did. And then uh, Dan, I met that night. And yeah, we played Burn. Oh, we did Burn. Uh, we did a Michael Shanker song. Oh, okay. Burn and Reddy. You didn't even know each other. No, no. no. Oh, that was the first time we actually met. Oh, I see, now you have to come back. Because we did a killer version of Burn. Oh, um, but then, no, uh, the week before your birthday party, actually, I had dealt with him online. And I, I told you, there's two guys that really impressed me online. It was uh, Mike, Mike Kardinsky and him. Just really responsive, really friendly, really accommodating. When you're trying to organize and you got people that are slow or resistive or, or difficult to work with, you pass them up and you go to the next guy. He was always accommodating, really nice, easy to deal with. You know, so same with Mike, Mike Kardinsky. So that's how I got a good vibe from him first. And then we played a couple songs. Yeah, and that was like it was mutual. It was yeah. mutual. Yeah. So we played a couple songs. We played some hard ones too. Burn from Deep Purple. We played some hard stuff, you know. And uh, now you I bought my keyboards. And I, had, I did it on guitar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why did I not know that? Okay. You should know you. I know. Yeah. I played. I played both John Lord's part and Richie oh Blackmore's part. God. Very well. Did you have two guitars? Good, no, I'm not actually. Michelangelo. Although I just played Michelangelo oh, with okay. Uli Roth. We did a oh, show. Oh my God. Uh, a name related I show. I missed that. I would have been losing my mind. It Who was, was singing? Uh, it was Mark Bowles singing, and uh, for um, was, I would have lost my mind. Yeah, it was yeah. Craig Goldie, um, Vinny Appice, um now, who are these guys? It's, it, was, it was basically <laughs> Uli. Yeah. It was Uli's friend. Uli's friend. Friends of Uli. Yeah, Friends of Uli. Brothers. Yeah, that was kind of the show. So it was oh, why? Must all work at IKEA or something. No, no the Uli, the Uli Roth and Scorpions. Uli Roth. Oh, I don't, I don't, not, I don't. The, not the guy who you cuss at at IKEA. It I doesn't. Know, I know Uli's wife. Okay. I don't want to know Uli. I want to know his. Uli's wife. actually really cool. He did an interview with Uli. Don't put that. I've, in I've interviewed Uli several times. Yeah, and, and what's your opinion of him? Very, very nice gentleman. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. He was in a bit of a hurry when yeah. we talked to him, but you know, hey, he's a bit, he's really John Roth. He's, he he's busy. Hurry, he still stops. He did. He no. Aged. He does. He's a really nice guy. People got shit to do sometimes, you know. I know. But you can't say fuck off. I actually met him at the NAMM <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah. Is that where we and he was, and he was very cool. I asked him for a picture, and he said no problem. Yeah. yeah. No. He's, yeah. He's a really nice guy. You know? Yeah. No. I mean, he's totally approachable. Yeah. I mean, he's not. He's not. He's a really nice guy. But it was busy. Uli's friends. It was Uli Roth, Mark Bowles. Uh, Vinny Appice, uh, Craig Goldie, um, the, the owner of Dean Guitars actually plays bass. Um, the crooked and, Denny's. Uh, no, they're all <laughs> no, pro, pro guys. Oh, pro guys. Pro guys. <laughs> uh, so that was the whole lineup that night. So and Michael Angel was doing a guest with Uli wow. doing Hendrix. Uh, where was I? They did Little Wing. Oh, God damn it. You're missing all the shows. What's the deal here? I was probably out of town. Well, now, Michael, Michael, what do you got coming up? Get, uh, tell our viewers what you have coming up. What's what's your, your next big gig coming up? I'm going to have to pull out my phone and look at my calendar. I... I only know where, like, like Tuesday or Wednesday. I look at my phone where I'm going to play this weekend, and so I knew I was playing here. Lots of out of town stuff. It's yeah. shit's coming up yet. I got an original project that's coming up. Uh, it's a band called Talon. Uh, they did an album with me about five years ago. Then they did. I, I don't want to talk. No, that's that's some talking shit. Uh oh. I'm not talking shit about them. No, don't talk shit. What? Who are the guys in the band? No, it sounds bad because they did two albums. Album. They did. They did two albums without me, and oh, then the, the uh, then the record company said we want the original guy. They said, "Oh, you want to do another one? Get the original guy." So, that's not dissing. That's fine. Okay. That's not, not the band. You didn't tell them they were Go rock and roll, folks. No, 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 no. Yeah, you're fine. But who are the guys? It's gonna be a great album. Who are the guys though? People you don't know. Okay. John, John, what the industry know? Because this is gonna go out. It to web everywhere. Well, well Talon, um, I think they got signed to either Frontiers or, or MelodicRock.com. Uh, uh, out of Australia, the dude that does MelodicRock.com, Andrew, great guy, McNeese. Um, 
So I'm not really sure who they got signed with, but they were like insistent on. Well, Frontiers is just signing every everybody guy. these yeah, days. Be, it was Frontiers and the guy from Australia you're talking with in the last yeah. ten years. That's so that's old school. That's why people don't know anything about what I do over here. It's all over here. Now I played a festival over there last year, and I walked through the crowd and I was like, Oh my God! I'm like. In the States, and like what? Yeah, home yeah. Depot, oh, it was blown away. People, well, it's funny because I, I do the same thing. I played festivals in Germany, yeah. and Germany uh, Italy, and England, and I go out there and yeah. it's huge, 100,000 people. Yeah. When I come back here, we're playing to 500 people, and they're like, yeah. no. Well, they actually know me here too. Yeah. But it's not the same as, as being in Europe or wherever. We're having that. 100,000 people. Just There's cool. a really solid rock fan base over, over in England and, and, and Europe in all Europe now, in Australia here's and even, even Japan it, it flows here's the thing if people don't realize the only place metal died was in the US yeah. it did not die overseas it did not die in South America metal did not die at the coach house tonight no. metal was alive California. I agree with that and you know the difference it's funny I talked to a lot of English guys and they, they have festivals over there so so like I talked to the guys in Deep Purple for example and they they, they play these festivals with metal Metal bands and families come out and see them. Yeah. And here it's a little, it's a little different. And of course, South America, it's a whole different world now. What happened was in the 90s we had the whole grunge movement, right? But it was U.S. centric. It was not international. A lot of people don't know that. So in the U.S. we had this whole thing: rock and roll's dead, metal's dead, blah blah. That was U.S. centric. South America never stopped. Europe never stopped. Australia never stopped. Yeah. Neither did Asia. They kept going with metal. They never stopped. Huge, huge fan. I still got people that from Japan, from Germany, from Europe that still are. In full contact with stuff I did in the 70s and the 80s. So metal never died anywhere else but here for a short period of time. Right. And that only lasts five years. years. Even when I'm over there, like the fans will Skid Row's killer. The fans will say hey, They are. They sound good. The next is like Moose Knuckle or, <laughs> or Shave That Thing. And I'm like, I've never heard of these fans. Well, he, he just did a tie-in. Moose Knuckle. I don't think he was close. <laughs> I don't for Moose Knuckle. It's a technical. It's a great band. It is. It's also okay. great. Okay. Well, right. well you got a little story? You okay. Story. okay. Do you know the Moose Knuckle is? I don't. No, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you ever heard of camel toe, right? Yeah. Okay, when a guy's wearing shorts too tight, that's a moose knuckle. It's a moose that's got a, a thing that's all <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> What's your next gigs coming up? Uh, I got a show, I believe it's the 21st of uh, next month. Uh, I, I have to check my calendar to see where it's at. That's with Avenging Grace. Yeah, we have, yes, we have a Facebook page, Avenging Grace. Avenging Grace. Uh huh. Okay. And AvengingGrace.com as well? I don't think so, yeah. No, no. Just on Facebook. Okay, well, we'll tell people to go look for Avenging Grace on, on Facebook. And you're on Facebook as well? Why live? Yeah. yeah, you are. In fact, I'm also the media guy. Uh, all promo, uh, advertisements, flyers, uh, web presence, media interviews, all the stuff I usually coordinate. Okay. And, uh, and come check me out at vintagerock.com. <laughs> I like the way that yeah. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, we will end it. we got to go check out Skid Row, but thank you. White Live, here from Live Coach House. Thanks a lot. Keep going. Love letters in the sand. I remember you. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, Sean. Thank you. All right, guys. Glad we got it done. Hey, wait a minute. There you go. There you go.